Well, David, I kind of find it interesting that my ac access to information request made to the Canadian Armed Forces right after the uh, January 4th uh, exclusive by Rebel News was answered in, in lockstep fashion. And guess the day I got it, David. I got it the day that your great video and great work at Rebel News broke. So <laughs> interestingly enough, normal ATIPs take 30 to 60 to 90 days to process. I received a nice form letter from Canadian Forces and National Defence the day that your air broadcast aired saying that the government has no records, no records of any jets flying between the period of December the 24th to January the 6th, which in fact is, is absolutely incorrect because we have the picture of the two jets on the tarmac in Ottawa at 3.35 on January the 4th being pulled into the hangar as well. We have the transponder going off at 3.28 and uh, you know, like that, those are Canadian government jets. We had boots on the ground. We have the pictures. Well, folks, you might recall that a couple of weeks ago, we had an interview with Guy Annabelle of the Capital Voice. Uh, while most of us were taking it easy during the Christmas time break, well, that wasn't the case with Guy. He was tracking flights into and out of Canada, and he put together a hypothesis that it looks like Prime Minister Justin Trudeau may have gone into the Caribbean perhaps even Turks and Caicos Islands. Uh, as you know, we did reach out to the PMO office to confirm or deny that allegation. Uh, they never responded, and sometimes, I guess, silence is deafening. And I'll tell you, we've got Guy back to talk about the fallout of his flight tracking and his interview on Rebel News. So without further ado, here is Guy Annabelle himself from Ottawa. How you doing, my friend? I'm doing fine, David. Uh, you made it out alive from Dundas Square, I see. <laughs> yeah, it's like Escape from New York to that, <laughs> that movie. But, Guy, tell me, I, I, what I found fascinating is that, you know, we do live in a day and age, increasingly, of cancel culture. And you found out that after you started posting your data, your hypothesis, because let's be clear, we don't know if it's true or not, whether the Prime Minister did uh, take a little excursion uh, to the Caribbean. But nevertheless, you posted your hypothesis on Facebook, and then what happened, my friend? Well, on January the 4th, David, the, uh, the Twitter world went wild when the uh, hashtag, where is Justin Trudeau, went viral. And uh, four days later, on January the 7th, three days later, I was banished from the Facebook planet without cause, notice, or even infraction to anything that broke their community standards. Uh, the attached uh, picture shows that, and um, I was basically just not even given notice. So I uh, immediately uh, in engaged a lawyer, and um, the rest of the story is uh, we sent out legal notice to Facebook Canada asking them for the reason and uh, the subsequent reason for any breach of community standards that occurred and why my account was disabled. And you know, Guy, I always find that incredibly frustrating when you reach out to these um, social media giants and you say, why have I been deplatformed? It's always that innocuous phrase, you violated the terms and conditions of the community without actually giving you a tangible reason of what you said. And I guess, um, given the timeline, given when you were deplatformed originally, uh, it goes back to when you were speculating about the Prime Minister's whereabouts. And we should point out that the director of Facebook Canada is a Mr. Kevin Chan. Who is Mr. Chan? Um, Mr. Chan, most notably, was the director of the Liberal Digital Platform Strategies when Justin was first elected in 2015. Kevin Chan uh, was definitely the uh, the leader of their digital strategy on all things social media. Uh, he comes with from a very very back, a very very dark background. Again, uh, was associated with Lead Now, and uh, interestingly enough, David, two years later, he was appointed the director of Facebook Canada. So we have the former liberal strat digital strategy leader for the election in 2015 appointed and anointed to 
the head of Facebook Canada. They're you know, isn't it fascinating, Guy? I mean, with the federal government, uh, well, really, the taxpayer increasingly funding media organizations, and with um, a friend like Mr. Chan as the director of Facebook Canada, it's kind of getting a little incestuous, isn't it? Uh, you know, I mean, my, my boss, Ezra, when it comes to the media, likes to say uh, the watchdogs have become the lapdogs. And certainly when you have somebody like Mr. Chen as director of Facebook Canada, that's kind of a good friend to have in a high place when it comes to, um, I don't know, censoring impolite opinions. Well, if you skate where the puck is going and you look at where <laughs> Stefan G. Bo is coming down with this oh, yeah. new legislation, oh, yeah. uh, it all fits into perfect harmony, doesn't it, in the liberal world? Yeah, it, it is scary. Now, I understand you told me off camera the cost of getting this lawyer's letter out to them was $400. And just yesterday, um, suddenly, without any kind of notice or explanation again, your Facebook um, penalty box visit was eradicated, you're, you're back on Facebook. So I think, Guy, this tells me a couple of things. One, when you're dealing with a bully, as always, fight back. You know, you didn't bend the knee, you went out and hired a lawyer at considerable cost. But the sad thing here is that, especially during this pandemic, when so many people are going through hard times, who's got hundreds or even thousands of dollars to wage wars with the Silicon Valley tech giants to get reinstated. So in, in a way, there's a degree of economic penalization going on here as well as censorship. Well, David, you wouldn't believe how many people reached out to me uh, since the first uh, rebel uh, exclusive on Justin Trudeau traveling to the Turks, allegedly. And um, so many people have reached out to me saying the same thing has happened to them. What do I do? And you're right, No, not everybody can afford to engage a lawyer. I did it out of principle. I did it out of, you know, I'm not going to take this anymore and I'm going to stand up to quote an old movie. And uh, I was very well served by a, a prominent Toronto lawyer and uh, he engaged very rapidly. He knows the plight that many people are going through and both under the Human Rights Code of uh, Infractions of Ontario, I was not economically hurt as much as some of the people that have called me that own media companies and own website making companies that integrate Facebook into making these web pages so they cannot now manage pages that they manage for their customers because they've been thrown off Facebook and really have been economically hurt by the arbitrary actions of Facebook again without producing cause or the breach of standards if we know what the rules are and we know when we've broken them, David, then we can basically adhere to them. That's what a normal, reasonable, tax-paying human being does in Canadian society. But again, if we can arbitrarily get thrown off the platform without cause or notice, what does that say for Canada as a free speech country and a rule of law country? Well, it's chilling, Guy, to me, especially as a journalist, to see this kind of censorship going on behind the scenes. Um, but, you know, it's interesting... Just for speculating, and I think it was fair speculation, we won't rehash all the evidence you presented on the first video. People can go back and watch the original video, but you were tracking flights. You, you talked about when it landed back in Ottawa in January, um, a five-car motorcade, I believe. I don't know many people in Ottawa <laughs> other than the prime minister that gets a five-car motorcade. There was that photo. We don't know if it's legit or not, but it looks like Justin Trudeau on a beach. It could be Photoshopped. It's just all speculation. But, you know, the video did extremely well, well over 100,000 views. Uh, most people were incredibly intrigued, but there were naysayers out there. There was one person who basically said, your source, meaning you, Guy, is either a um, liar or an idiot. That was his words, because he was doing flight tracking himself, and none of this, uh, allegedly, according to him, happened. So what to believe, my friend? Well, David, I kind of find it interesting that my ac access to information request made to the Canadian Armed Forces right after the uh, January 4th uh, exclusive by Rebel News was answered in, in lockstep fashion. And guess the day I got it, David? 
I got it the day that your great video and great work at Rebel News broke. So <laughs> interestingly enough, normal ATIPs take 30 to 60 to 90 days to process. I received a nice form letter from Canadian Forces and National Defence the day that your air broadcast aired saying that the government has no records, no records of any jets flying between the period of December the 24th to January the 6th, which in fact is, is absolutely incorrect because we have the picture of the two jets on the tarmac in Ottawa at 3.35 on January the 4th being pulled into the hangar as well. We have the transponder going off at 3.28 and uh, you know, like that, those are Canadian government jets. We had boots on the ground. We have the pictures. And uh, again, David, um, I've been called worse by better. And uh, again, uh, we, we all know that uh, the success of the video and the success of Rebel News telling this story is indicative of how people are really, really clamoring for an alternate news uh, source. And uh, congratulations to Rebel and, and to all the great work that you do, David. Hey folks, are you a business owner and you are sick and tired of the authorities telling you to keep your store closed? Well, if you plan to open up illegally, I want to hear about it. Please go to IWillOpen.com. That's IWillOpen.com. 